Millsurp Garage, I'm back with you with the rolling block. Boy, did I go down a rabbit hole here. Let me explain to you what I've been doing for a week here. With like, I did some serious research. I had to suspend the video that I had planned just to really get into this thing. I'm doing a video on it. Just opened up a whole can of worms here with me. And um, this all, they started years ago when I got this thing. I had heard originally that it was kind of dangerous to shoot the seven millimeter rolling blocks because it was the transition from the black powder to the smokeless powder and for that reason you had to be careful and that the, with the head spacing issues that they kind of changed the seven millimeter uh the dimensions of the seven millimeter round later on in like the 20s or 30s or something so that if you bought modern ammo um you could have a problem and uh, I did some research back then, though I don't really remember it. And I kind of came to the conclusion that I felt like I would be okay. And um, I had this Chilean surplus stuff, which I'll get to in a minute. And I had shot... Oh, actually, I, I couldn't shoot anything out of it, which was the reason why I didn't really even really care about the research that much. That's right. is because it had a broken firing pin. But then it was just a lot of procrastination... Uh, as to fixing that, but when I finally did fix it, I had come to the conclusion that I th was pretty much sure I'd be all right. You know, it's those kind of things that you just kind of blow off. And I didn't put, maybe I put 10 rounds through it, you know what I mean? And then I went to the range maybe one other time, shot it a few times. But then when I went to the range to do this video, to film the range video and to actually do uh, some shooting before I did the video for this thing, that's when I had done the most shooting that I've ever done at all. Maybe I put 30. 40 rounds or something through it, something like that, of my Chilean surplus. And um, I got a comment from Luca Latino on the Rolling Block video, who says, uh, great video, nice looking rifle, be careful with factory ammo in this rifle. He's saying factory ammo. When the 7x57 case was standardized, I think in the 20s, the shoulder of the cartridge was shortened slightly. Many of these 7mm contract rifles will have excess headspace, which can be a big safety issue. There's a lot, of in, a lot of info out there on the subject. I have the same rifle with the older style extractor, which I fire form brass for. Definitely a labor of love. I'll try to link some info, and he sends a link. Now, he's absolutely right. I've read the same things. I've read that there was excessive headspace between the older rifles and newer factory ammo and i've uh i've also heard about people that fire from the brass i i don't know the 100 percent what that procedure is because i'm not a reloader but just um so definitely do your research if you want to get into that i am definitely not the person to ask but if you're not sure even what that means um this is a very basic explanation of it, and if you're very familiar with it, my explanation is going to sound kind of dumb, but what I'm pretty sure that it is is that you take the bullets, the modern bullets apart, and you knock the pressure down, like you take a lot of powder out of it to make them very, very uh, tame, but strong enough to expand the brass to conform to the chamber. So you're not going to be exploding the rifle or... Or, uh, or or damaging anything, but then once that brass is fire formed, now you could reload it to higher pressures and it's more supported by the the chamber, the the, the chamber that wasn't the proper size to begin with. Um, and I have heard about people that do that. Now, uh, in this thread, this is what started getting me down this rabbit hole now, because in this thread that he links, um, if you're going to, you can pause the video and if you want to, go back to the other video and find his comment and click on his link. And then you take a look. The guy lists, in this thread, lists four Remington rolling blocks that are dangerous for that reason. There's the 7x57 Mauser. Although these are the four that are in smokeless powder. The 8x58R rimmed uh, Danish by Husqvarna. The Mauser was a Remington. The 8x50 rimmed LaBelle Remington. And the 3040 Crag Remington. Um... And uh, if you read down in it, it does say there's a danger with the, uh, there's a danger, definitely a danger with the, uh, in, in this situation with the shows exploded receivers and all kinds of stuff. So I'm sure there's definitely some 
truth to this, you know what I mean? And there's a lot of information here. And and then there's something that's really interesting, which is I got to a guy that starts talking about an accident that happened, that there was a guy, he's basically talking about there's a lot of rifles in this category. He puts in this category 1892 to 99 Crags, low number 1903s. We've all heard of that. The O3 Springfields that supposedly were failing. Uh, the Lee Navy 1895, the 1888 Commission rifle in uh, Germany, the early long Lee Medford rifles, some which were proof for compressed black powder, 1889 Schmidt Rubens. So there's a lot of rifles like right on that 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 cusp of going to the smokeless powder that are considered a little dangerous, you know what I mean? And uh, there's this guy that was killed. His name is Glenn DeRuder. He was killed shooting a Lee Navy rifle. And uh, it's this guy's story that he was actually there. Or, I don't know, I think he's linking he's linking uh, uh, a link He's, he's copy and pasting what a first-hand eyewitness saw that day and did that day. It was like a cute guy that said, I was the first one to arrive at the scene. He was like looking at the rifle parts before the cops even got there. You know what I mean? When the guy was taken away to the hospital, he was examining the rifle and he, he's relating here what he saw and what he, what he found. And uh, it turns out that this guy... Let me see if I could find out. This guy, this guy Glenn DeRuder, was a. Uh, I'm looking for it. Oh, where does it have what he, his job? This is, this is where I got my ammo from. This guy was a parts manager of Sarco Incorporated in New Jersey, which is. I am almost 100% sure that Sarco is where I bought my 7mm Chilean surplus ammo from. So let me let me cut to like this ammo. I've done a video before on this on this ammo because um I bought it and basically I was saying oh the Chilean surplus stuff works great and this WRA stuff works terribly. So let me explain. I'm going to show you exactly what came in this package. Uh, it was a ton of ammo. And about half of it was was this stuff, okay? Let me zoom in so I can show you some some uh, head stamps here. Half of it was this stuff: WRA seven millimeter is what it says on it, and this stuff was garbage. Uh, and I was firing this out of my 1895 Chilean Mauser, and um, I would say half of these, maybe even more, maybe only one out of three rounds actually went bang. And half of the delivery was this stuff. So right away, that stuff got trashed. The other half of the delivery, literally 15 rounds of it only, were this uh, FNT 1953 is the head stamp on that this stuff is not attracted to a magnet and it kind of it looks this stuff look looks pretty good i mean i'm sure it's military but there were only literally 15 rounds of this in the other 50 percent now what was in the other 50 percent was half of it was this Chilean surplus with this head stamp. So that's 19, what is that? 1976. All right. That was half of it. And the other half, I thought I had that out here, but I did not. Put it back out. The other half of it was this stuff. And uh, here's the head stamps for this. So I think it's 1971, right? Yeah, Chilean, oops, sorry. Chilean 1971. 
So what? Uh, what's different between this stuff and this stuff? Cupro nickel. This is Cupro nickel, and uh, it attracts a mag magnet. It's steel. So the reason why I don't really use this stuff much is because I go to a couple of different ranges. And in one of the ranges, there's enough that goes around with a magnet. If he sees old ammo and if it attracts a magnet, he says you can't use it because it's, he calls it, armor piercing. So you can't use it. No armor piercing ammo allowed. The guy's a nut. Uh, you try to explain to him that it's not armor piercing. It's just, uh, you know, it's there's no steel core to it or anything. Armor piercing ammo is would be incredibly expensive. I certainly wouldn't be getting it in this this huge lot of seven millimeter surplus. So I was all just using this stuff. Now I think what saved me, I, sh I went out now and uh, going down this rabbit hole, I put on big thick electrician's gloves, a huge winter jacket. I put on like a welder's face mask and uh, forget about it. I was like wrapped up like a juggernaut and I um, put 150 rounds through this thing of this stuff and saving all the brass because usually I look at a couple of brass a couple of pieces just to make sure everything looks okay and then I just shoot and I discard the stuff because it's not reloadable but I saved every single brass and I have no bulging no tearing nothing there's look down here see these uh primers if there was any kind of overpressure stuff going on you would see the primer would be mashed into that pocket. It would be flat straight across. You would see uh, cratering going on where the primer hit is that the, the brass would actually be trying to force its way into the into the firing pin hole. You got none of that. This is like perfect, absolutely perfect looking brass. Nothing's expanded here. Nothing's torn. It's They all look like this, every single one. So what's the answer? Why, why is it that I'm not having a problem and that I feel confident that I could shoot this thing? Here's my, this is my take on it. I think that this ammo was made for the Chilean 1895 bolt action rifle. What were they using in 1971 and 1976? What was that rifle still in Chile? They were using something different in seven millimeter? They were still using the 1895 Mauser. So if, if the 1895 bolt action Mauser would have been the old sizing before this change in the 20s. So I think this is the ammo that you need to use for these. It's the proper ammo for this gun. Um, before that change, I'm not using modern ammo. And I think that's why I'm not having a problem. This all, this doesn't look, there's no gas escaping past here. Look. They're clean. There's no, there's no gas escaping past head speed. I know what head spacing issue brass looks like after it's been fired. And, and look at it. This is not it. These are clean. There's no gas. This is sealing perfectly. And uh, there's no stretching or anything. This is... Uh, and these can't be reloaded. It's a, it's a shame. If they could be reloaded, they're like... Now they're perfectly fire formed, but... Um, they're not it's they're non-reloadable so you don't even have to worry about that so i think this is the way to go i think this is the answer to this problem let me know what you think uh just i came out of the rabbit hole and that's where i'm at that i'm using seven millimeter military surplus ammo made either by chile or for chile for their 1895 bolt action rifle which even predates this manufacture so if there was a different chamber sizing, then this stuff is that different chamber sizing. And uh, I'm just glad I got a ton of it because apparently I have two rifles that... Uh, how come you never hear about the 1895 Chilean Mauser has a chamber that's too small and there's excessive headspace? How come you don't hear about that? It's the same, it's the same rimless... Uh, rimless round that has the seat in there. Why don't you hear a problem with that? Huh. Interesting, right? Well, I don't have a problem with this ammo, and I think the reason is because of, uh, it's because this is the correct ammo. You tell me what you think. And I will be back soon, now that that's all over. I'm, uh, coming back with a new rifle, hopefully this weekend, to show you guys. So, 
Well, not a new rifle, but you know what I mean. New to us. So, y'all take care. Let me know what you think about this. And uh, we'd be really curious to know what your take on it is. See y'all later.